If you like the story, feel free to give it a thumbs up and leave any comments below about your experiences. And if you aren't already subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can be kept up to date when new videos go live. So I hope you enjoy the story. So take a moment to allow your eyes to close. Allow yourself to begin to relax. And as you begin to relax, I don't know whether you'll relax deeper with the sound of my voice, or whether it'll be with the spaces between my words. But as you begin to relax, listening to my voice, I'm just going to tell you a story in the background. And while I tell this story, you can just drift comfortably asleep. And the story is about a business person. And they're on a flight, as they do frequently. And while they're on this flight, as the plane takes off and rises into the sky, they settle into the flight by putting on an eye mask, putting in some headphones, shutting out all external noises all external sight. And they just have a relaxing sound playing in their ears as they begin to drift comfortably in your mind. And as they begin to drift comfortably, they start to have this feeling, this feeling of walking through a forest. And as they have this feeling of walking through a forest, they start to hear the sound of each footstep. And they start to feel the feeling of each footstep. The sound and the feelings of the footsteps on the leaves on the ground, on the muddy path. And they pay attention to that mud. They pay attention to what it looks like, what it sounds like, its consistency. And as they pay attention to that mud, so they drift deeper into their mind. And while they drift deeper into their mind, this forest begins to become more real to them. The forest begins to form, first other sounds, sounds of the wind blowing through the trees, of the rustling leaves, the sounds of birds, the sounds of other animals, different sounds of scurrying, of movement, of cracking twigs in the distance. And although there are these sounds, they have this feeling like this is peaceful. They think of it as being peaceful. Even though there are some sounds around them. And after they have a sense of the sounds, they begin to get a sense of what they can see. They start to notice from the ground out to the sides where there's more greenery. They notice the way that around the base of trees there's just more mud, some toadstools, but generally quite clear areas. And then a bit away from the trees they notice that there's smaller plants growing in the areas where the canopy above doesn't quite block the light to the forest floor. And they notice the different shades of browns, the different colours of the bark of the trees. 
they can feel the slight breeze on their face and they notice the different greens and they imagine how those greens change as the seasons change how the greens change to autumnal colours and they gaze around themselves taking in this forest as they become more distant from that plain And while they become more aware of the forest, so they relax deeper. And this reality becomes more real to them. And they continue walking this forest path. And in the distance they can hear a babbling stream. And they start walking towards that sound. And as they walk towards the sound of the babbling stream, so they drift deeper and more relaxed. And as they drift deeper and more relaxed, so the babbling stream increases in sound. And as they near the stream, they start to smell the fresh air that kind of fresh air that you get given off by water and they reach the stream and they gaze down into the stream and it's a very shallow stream and they can see the movement on the surface and how it follows the rocks below they can see twigs floating down the stream and they start following that stream, following the stream towards a lake. And they walk along the edge of that stream and they see a little family of ducks in the stream. And they slow down to admire the ducks, to watch the ducks going about their everyday business. And the ducks turn and start heading upstream. And they watch how the ducks tack across the stream so that they can start working their way up the stream. And how the parents keep an eye on the youngsters. And then they continue following that stream. And after a while they find the lake, out in a clearing. And around the lake as they look around they notice. They notice the blue sky above. They notice any clouds. They notice the time of day. They notice the forest circling around that lake. And they go and sit down on the side next to the lake, listening to the water of the lake lapping gently on the shore, gazing out and relaxing, feeling the warmth of the sun, smelling the fresh air as it blows gently off the top of the lake. Hearing the rustling leaves of the forest in the background and the sounds of birds and seeing some deer across the other side of the lake drinking some water and looking around and seeing what else you notice. And they decide to rest here for a while and while they rest here for a while, 
They feel themselves drifting and dreaming into a reverie as they relax. And while they relax, they start to hear the voice of a child. And they wonder at first whether the voice of the child is in their mind or somewhere nearby. And they look around and they see in the distance a child playing by the lake. And as the sun's beginning to set, stand up and they walk around the lake they walk over to that child and they ask the child what they're doing and the child says they're just playing by the lake they ask where their parents are and the child says they don't have any parents they live here And as the sun's setting, the person decides to set up a little camp and asks the child if they want to join them. And the person sets up a little campfire, a tent, and cooks up some food for each other. Them sit and eat the food. And the person asks about what the child is doing here, how the child survives. And the child explains there's plenty here to survive on. And they occupy themselves. They play by day and sleep by night. And they don't see company, they don't see other people. This person is the first person they've seen in a long time. And the child explains that they appeared here one day. They were sat somewhere in a library reading a book and while they were reading they started imagining things and drifting off in their imagination and the next minute they found themselves here and they didn't know where here was and they've never seen their parents since And they said that in the book they were reading, it said about a dragon, a wise dragon that lives in a palace on a far away planet. And that that dragon can show them the way home. But he didn't know how to find that dragon. So he remained here. He felt safe and comfortable here at this lake. Able to relax by day and play and sleep at night. And there was plenty around to eat. And he learned a lot of skills. And the person thought they're going to help this child. See if they can help this child get home. Because they know that they can get home just by thinking about waking up. They don't know why the child can't just think about waking up and get home. Or why they seem to have this shared experience.
And then as the sun finally sets fully over the horizon and the moon rises in the sky, the two of them fall asleep. And as they fall asleep, so the campfire burns down to embers, emitting a gentle warmth. And the sounds around them change from the day sounds to the night sounds as they relax deeper and drift comfortably asleep. And the next day the person tells the child that they're going to go and try and find this dragon. They didn't know if there was any kind of a clue and they were told that the only clue is that you've got to search in daylight and find the waterfall. And they didn't know what this meant, but they thought it's a start. So they left the child, walked around the lake and continued following the stream back into the woods out the other side of the lake. And as they followed the stream, so the sounds dimmed as they walked deeper into the forest again. And while they walked deeper into the forest, they became aware of the change of sounds again. Aware of the way that light danced and shimmered in front of them. As it shone down through the canopy above. the way it created rays of light as it lit up pollen and dust in the air and everything felt so peaceful and calm and they were curious how they were going to help this child but they thought if they're looking for a waterfall Following the stream is probably the best place to start. And so they followed this stream deeper into the forest. So deep into the forest that they couldn't see where they came from. And the stream wound left and right. And they continued following that stream. Occasionally they'd hear splashes of birds dive bombing into the stream, catching small fish. They'd catch glimpses of other animals drinking from the stream and glimpses of animals through the trees. But the animals kept their distance. They could hear the sounds of birds. And hear other forest sounds. And they occasionally ran their fingers along the bark of the trees. And listened to the sounds of their footsteps. And a feeling of walking alone through this forest. Curious how they'll help the child. And they walked deeper and deeper. And they could sense that the day was moving on. That it had probably passed the middle of the day. And the sun would be setting soon. They continued to walk until they eventually found another clearing. And at this clearing, they gazed out and saw that they were now on a bit of a slope. and that the stream had begun to widen 
and because it's on more of a slope, the stream was now travelling faster. and was louder than before and there was more white water as the stream worked its way over and around rocks so they followed this widening stream across the clearing they could see what time of day it was and that the sun was beginning to set so they decided to stop at the far side of the clearing and camp there for the night and they'd carry on their journey in the morning. So they cooked themselves some food. They lay back in a makeshift tent gazing up at the sky watching the way stars twinkled watching shooting stars pass across the sky, having this feeling like they could hear them crackling as they flew past. And even having a feeling like they could smell them, a slightly sulphur smell. And as they gazed up at the sky, so they drift comfortably asleep. And the next morning, they packed up and carried on their journey into the woods. And they continued walking deeper and deeper. They were aware that the ground was sloping down even more now. The water was speeding up faster. And after a few hours of walking, they could hear this roar gradually appearing in the distance. And the roar got louder and louder as they walked closer and closer until eventually they came out of the other side of the forest and found themselves atop a cliff looking down a long drop and as they looked down that long drop they could see the stream they've been following pouring down as a waterfall and they could see other streams from other places in the forest in a large arc all falling down in their own waterfalls and they climbed down the side of the waterfall they could feel the spray of the water on their face they could hear that waterfall pouring down to a giant lake below. They walked all the way down, climbed all the way down and reached the base. Walked part way round the lake so they could step back and have a look at the different waterfalls. They wondered whether these were the waterfalls they were supposed to find. So they looked at the different waterfalls And they could see that the sun was shining into this area. And that the shadow as the sun moved across the sky was moving across the land. And they just sat and watched, wondering what it is they're supposed to learn. They just sat there with patience being sure that when they saw it or learned it it would just stand out to them and they watched as the 
sun moved around and the light passed across the different waterfalls. And then at one of the waterfalls, as the light reached it, it created this beautiful rainbow in the spray. And from their perspective, they noticed the rainbow was a circle. And that it seemed to shimmer in the middle. And they had this feeling that somehow this was the sign. And they jumped in the water and they swam across the lake towards that waterfall. Coming out of the water, near to the waterfall. And they could still see that rainbow. And they climbed up to where the rainbow was. And they noticed that there was a cave behind that waterfall. And they walked into the cave, noticing how the sounds changed to this watery, echoey sound as the sound of the waterfall reverberated around the cave walls. And they started walking deeper into the cave. And as they walked deeper into the cave, they noticed how the light from the sun was somehow reflecting around the cave off of crystals within this cave lighting up the interior of the cave and they were sure this would only last a while just while the sun is in the right position so they walked deeper into the cave, they could hear dripping water as the rumble of water behind them faded the deeper they walked. And after a while of walking, they heard a slight hum. And they continued walking and the more they walked, the louder the hum got. And after a while, they could see the back cave wall was shimmering slightly. It looked like solid rock, but it also looked like it was shimmering, like it was slightly out of focus. And they rubbed their eyes, and they tried to focus their eyes. But nothing they did seemed to bring that cave wall into focus. It just continued to shimmer slightly. So they walked closer to it and then reached out with their hand to touch the wall and found their hand went straight through the wall. And as their hand went through the wall, so the humming got slightly louder. They could feel their heart racing slightly more. So they started breathing in a calm way. Breathing in, counting to seven, and breathing out, counting to eleven, to help themselves to trigger the relaxation response. And the more they relaxed, the calmer they became. Until the breathing was just happening automatically in that calm way. And they then walked forward, keeping their arm outstretched. And they saw their arm disappearing through the cave wall. And then they stepped forward and watched as their foot and their leg went through the cave wall. And the humming got louder the more of them was through the wall. And then they followed their arm and their leg passing themselves fully through that cave wall. And they found themselves in what looked like a cave, facing out towards the exit of the cave. And it looked like it was night time. 
and so they continued walking forward, they exited the cave. They looked up at the night sky and they could see the most beautiful nebula stretched across the sky in the most beautiful colours. Bright stars. Two moons. And none of it looked like they were used to. And they were very quickly aware this wasn't the Earth. This wasn't where they came from. And so, because it was night time, they decided to just stay still, just stay put for a while. So they set up a camp, and they just watched and waited, watching how the moons moved across the sky, watching the way the stars moved across the sky. until eventually they watched as the sun began to rise and as the sun began to rise so they noticed off in the distance a glint of light that the sun was shining on something highly reflective And they wondered whether that was where they had to head next. And as the sun rose, it revealed more of this land. And the land looked familiar yet different. There was greenery. There was sounds like animals. There was different colours of plants. But none of it was what they'd seen before. And everything was slender and taller. And as they started walking, they found that they just felt that little bit lighter, a little more bounce in their step. And they realised this planet must be smaller, or at least have less mass. and just moving around felt easier. And they started walking in the direction of that glint of light. And as they walked across open meadow, admiring the different plants and animals they could see, different insects, and recognising how they have a familiar feel to them, yet none of them looked like they'd seen before. And then they passed into a forest, and walked deeper into that forest, trying to keep in direction with where they were heading, And after quite some time of walking, they found themselves come out the other side of the forest and back to a clearing. And they could see that there were hills leading up to some mountains. So they climbed the hills and walked over the hills. And they could see that up in the mountains was what looked like a crystal palace. It was all spiky and very tall. So they continued in the direction of that palace. They assumed that palace must be what they're searching for. And they climbed the hills and went over the hills and they started to climb the mountain. And they found climbing the mountain much easier than they imagined it would be. And as they climbed higher and higher, 
So they were aware of the temperature changing and getting a bit colder. And it wasn't uncomfortably cold. But they were aware that it was a bit colder as they climbed into the mountains. And after some trek, they finally reached that palace. And they just had to cross what looked like a crystal bridge to the entrance to the palace. So they crossed that bridge. They knocked on the entrance to the palace and they could hear their knock reverberate around the inside of the palace as if somehow their small little sound of a knock was amplified by the door and by the structure. And after a few moments the door creaked and swung open and they walked in to that palace. And the palace appeared to be empty. And they walked around the palace. Looking around, looking how high the ceiling was, how large these rooms were, how empty everything seemed. And in the distance they could hear the sound of deep breathing. And that breathing sounded really powerful. And they walked through from one room to another. Before eventually entering a room with a huge dragon. Just resting there. And as they entered, the dragon rose its head. And then on seeing the person, rose to its feet and towered over him. And as the dragon towered over them, It let out a burst of fire up into the air, followed by another and another, as if to clear its throat, before looking down at the person and asking why they've come in a deep, booming voice, who they are, and where they're from. And the person felt perfectly fine and safe, felt there was something trusting about this dragon. And the person explained about meeting this child and how this child had been reading a book in a library and then found themselves next to a lake and how they'd met this child next to that lake. But they're sure they can just wake up if they choose. But this child doesn't seem to be able to. And that the child had read something about needing to find a dragon in a palace on a planet. And so here they are. And the dragon told them they had to go through to a room out the back to the library of the palace and that they would find a book on a shelf and they would know when they see it it would be in the most beautiful golden cover that just seems to shine and reflect as if it's just as new as it's been created today, yet it's thousands of years old. And that they're to take that book
and that in that book the child is to read one of the chapters and reading that chapter will end the story for them and as their story ends so they will wake up back in the library as if no time has passed. So the person thanks the dragon, walks all the way to the library and sees this vast library with tens of thousands of books. And they look around all the walls. until they see a book that seems to jump out at them something that just seems to shine and sparkle and they go over to it take this huge book off the shelf and carry it out of the library back to the room with the dragon and they ask that dragon about the library about who they are and what they're doing here. And the dragon explains that they're the guardian of the nine realms. And that to be the guardian of the nine realms, they need to have all the knowledge of the nine realms. And that that one library is one of the libraries containing all the knowledge. And that what the child and what they were in is one of those nine realms. And the person asked about the book. How does the book work? How's the book going to get back here if we take it from this library? And the dragon said the books always find their way home when they're no longer needed. They're always stored in the right place for when they are needed. The dragon explained that all the libraries are like a brain. They contain all this knowledge and they continually get larger and larger with more books and more knowledge. And no knowledge is ever lost from the library. Not all knowledge gets looked at all the time, but no knowledge is ever lost. Any knowledge that gets taken from the library always finds its way back to where it came from. And the person didn't really understand but thanked the dragon for their help. And the dragon dropped back to the ground with a massive thud, took a deep breath, rested its head and closed its eyes as if it was falling asleep again. And the person asked, why do you just sleep? Do you not do anything else? And the dragon said in a sleepy voice, they're not sleeping. They have to drift into a state that allows them to open up their consciousness to monitor the nine realms. And they connect their consciousness through all the realms. And they can see all, hear all, sense all, feel all, and know everything about those nine realms. And they close their eyes and seem to drift away from here. As the person took the book, turned and left the palace. And they found their way back down the mountain. 
And they noticed that now the sun for this planet was setting. And they went down the mountain, went to the meadows, crossed the meadow and found their way back to that cave. And they decided they would camp here for the night before going through the cave. They thought it would be interesting to camp on an alien planet. And they'd now been awake for a while, so they're ready to fall asleep comfortably. And so they watched as the sun set, as the two moons rose, as the nebula and all the stars appeared brightly in the sky. And they watched and admired the uniqueness, the novelty of the experience of seeing a world never seen before, wondering whether they would ever visit here again, wondering whether the real earth that they're asleep in is one of the nine realms, or if all of this is just one big dream. or whether this place is separate from all those nine realms. And maybe there's other caves like this one that lead to the different realms. They had so many thoughts, so much curiosity that filled their mind as they drifted comfortably asleep. And then after sleeping for a number of hours, they awoke feeling refreshed, revitalised, full of energy. They packed away, picked up the book, walked through the cave, walked through the wall at the back of the cave, walked through the cave in the back of the waterfall, and found their way out of the waterfall, back down to the lake. They didn't want to get the book wet, so this time they carefully worked their way around the edge. They had to pass under a few waterfalls as they did so. So they just covered the book and wrapped it up while they passed under the waterfalls. But they were sure the book would have got more wet if they tried swimming with it. And then they found their way back to the waterfall that they'd initially climbed down the side of. And they climbed up that waterfall and found their way back through the forest, back to the first clearing. And they crossed that clearing, and then through the second bit of forest, following the stream the whole time, until eventually they found their way back to the lake. And back at the lake they could see in the distance the child was playing and going into the water and splashing around. And they went back to that child. And they explained to the child the journey they'd just been on. And the child said about how they'd been gone for what felt like weeks. And yet to the person it felt like they'd only been gone perhaps a day, maybe two at the most. And they explained to the child about the book and about how once the child reads the chapter in the book that's the end chapter of the book. 
and then closes the book. So they'll find themselves back in the library. As if no time has elapsed at all. And so the child read that last chapter all the way through to where it said the end. They looked up at the person and smiled. The person wondered what that chapter said. The child closed the book and then seemed to dematerialize in front of them. And the child appeared back in the library, noticing how their hands were closing the book. That they'd started reading in this library what felt like so long ago. And all that experience suddenly felt like a bit of a dream as they were now faced with being in a library as if that entire period of time hadn't happened. And they stood up and went off to find their parents. And the person watched that child dematerialize, hoping the child will be fine and noticing how just after the child dematerialized so the book began to dematerialize too and they hadn't had an opportunity to open the book themselves they hadn't thought to do it sooner and they hadn't had an opportunity to see what that chapter said and they watched the book dematerialize And they then just sat in their makeshift tent by a campfire. Thinking about how everything's back to normal. Their experience is back to how it normally is. That they drift off in a reverie when they make journeys. And they come to this place. They gaze out over this lake. They enjoy some time camping, enjoying being in nature. And they just drifted comfortably and relaxed asleep.